Now, the other cost curves um, are somewhat more problematic uh, in, in deriving, but we can indeed uh, derive them from, from previous analysis. First off, we said that the marginal cost curve looks something like this. That is, there is a range in which, uh, in which you have a, um, uh, the benefits of increasing uh, specialization of labor. And that means that the marginal cost of production can be going down. But there is some minimum uh, uh, after which uh, the law of diminishing um, marginal returns kick in. And when you have diminishing marginal returns, uh, you have increasing uh, marginal uh, cost. And there's no reason to expect diminishing returns to uh, reverse itself. Well, we know that if, um, if you have a marginal cost equal to that, uh, for one unit, then the average variable cost is going to be equal uh, to that. We know also that if the marginal cost is going down, the average variable cost must be going down and must be above uh, the average, uh, must be above the marginal cost. Uh, the reason is uh, that if in fact you have marginal cost of uh, $20 on the first unit and $10 on the second unit, uh, you can bet that the average uh, variable cost for those two units at the second unit is going to be above the marginal cost of 10. It's going to be an average of, of 15. Now, when we get down to this point, uh, you might think that the average variable cost curve will begin to move up. But no, so long as the marginal cost is below the uh, average variable cost, uh, the uh, the average variable cost must, in fact, be falling. Once it crosses this point and marginal cost gets above the average variable, then we know that the average variable cost curve must, in fact, uh, rise. We know that uh, the average total cost is going to be equal to average fixed cost uh, plus uh, average variable uh, cost. Uh, this means that what we are going to be uh, doing is adding this average variable cost curve to this average fixed cost curve over here. For a quantity of Q1, we get an average variable cost there. Well, we can plot that uh, here. Quantity Q1, uh, and that's the average variable cost, but we tack on the uh, average fixed cost, which is something like this. We uh, note from the other graph that the average um, uh, fixed cost at quantity Q2 is about that much. We add that to the uh, average variable cost uh, at about, uh, say, here. And we get a point of about right uh, there. Moral of the story is that the average total cost curve has got to look something like this. Average uh, total cost. Now, again, this is the minimum of the average uh, variable cost curve. The reason we know that is that so long as the marginal is below the average, the average has got to be falling. Once the marginal gets above the average, the average has got to be uh, rising, so this must be the minimum of that point. By a similar line of logic, we know that this is the minimum of the uh, ATC uh, curve. So long as the marginal cost is below the, uh, the average total cost, average total must in fact be falling. Uh, and when marginal cost gets above the average total cost, the average total cost uh, must be uh, rising. Now, what we, are, what we also know is that these two curves, the average total and the average variable cost curve, they must be converging uh, toward one another. And we know that uh, simply because uh, that in this graph, uh, this average uh, fixed cost uh, is constantly uh, declining. And if that's declining, then the difference, which is the average fixed cost, uh, must also uh, be 
uh, declining. We know that uh, the average fixed cost times the quantity there must be the same as the average fixed cost uh, here. And, um, and so the, the total fixed cost remains constant uh, throughout the uh, various quantities. What we have developed here is something of a uh, cost structure that we can use uh, to address the issue of how much uh, should a firm uh, produce. Notice in the graph, we have the quantity along this axis. We have a uh, structure for the cost. And then all we need to do is introduce uh, the price of the good, which we will uh, discuss in a, in a following um, uh, video uh, module. Uh, at any rate, we will use this cost structure for general purposes because it is, it is very general. It's not specific to a particular firm. Uh, most firms uh, experience some uh, benefits of specialization of labor, and all firms experience uh, uh, diminishing marginal returns, at least beyond uh, some points. So our cost structure is very general. It's applicable across many industries, and we will show you how it can be used uh, with, uh, with considerable insights being uh, drawn in future video modules. Uh, thank you very much.